What is a woman? Why do you ask that question? I'm, I'm asking. That's why I came to a college professor. For some reason, this video came up on my For You page, and while I really don't like giving people like this attention, there is one thing about all videos like this that I think is kind of funny. You see, these videos are all exactly the same. It's a super awkward interview where somebody asks what a woman is, and then records the discomfort or hesitation that somebody shows in providing a simple, clear-cut answer to that question. And the end conclusion of all of these videos is look how funny it is that this doctor, this scientist, this college professor, this lawmaker, this activist, this woke liberal whatever can't even even tell me what a woman is, aren't they all so silly? And of course these videos are all edited in that super dishonest Ray Comfort style where it makes it look like the interviewer is the only sane person in the room. In fact, these videos are so much like Ray Comfort's videos that Ray Comfort and his team made one of them for themselves. But as odious and malignant as these videos are, what I find funny about them is the genuine and palpable disconnect between the person doing the interview and the person being interviewed. Because the person doing the interview thinks that they're asking some hard-hitting gotcha question that that's gonna expose the hypocrisy of the liberal left. But the person being interviewed, more often than not, is somebody who knows what they're talking about. They're an anthropologist, or a gender studies researcher, or a doctor, and their bemusement with this question is not because they don't know what to say, it's because they're just stunned that somebody would be this disingenuous and hung up on such a silly question. And if it wasn't for the sad fact that way too many people take these videos seriously, they would be the most perfect cringe comedy videos on the entire internet. Because what you inevitably end up with is a situation where one person is sitting there super smug because they just vehemently denied that nuance exists, and the other person just not knowing where to go from here. But in the interest of education, let's dive down the rabbit hole and answer this question together, shall we? We'll start with the dictionary definition of what a woman is. I've got Merriam-Webster pulled up here, and it says that a woman is an adult female person. And while that may sound like the super clean-cut answer that these interviews are looking for, it's kind of problematic, isn't it? Because woman and female are often used synonymously in our culture, so maybe we should look up the definition of female just to be safe. Of, relating to, or being the sex that typically has the capacity to bear young or produce eggs. Of, relating to, or being typically. It's almost like there's nuance here. But you should also notice that that's only definition 1A. Let's take a look at definition 1B and see what that says. Having a gender identity that is the opposite of male. Uh-oh, there's that word identity. I know that these interviewers really don't like that word, but just for funsies, let's look up the definition of gender identity and see what that says. A person's internal sense of being male, female, some combination of male and female, or neither male nor female. So in summary, when we take into account the fact that whether or not you can have children doesn't actually define who you are as a person, it seems that the dictionary definition of a woman is an adult human with an internal sense of being female. A person who identifies as a woman is a woman. And I would agree with that definition, because remember, scientifically speaking, sex and gender are completely different things. Neither one is binary, and gender specifically is a social construct. But unfortunately, the people who make these videos like to pretend that that's a controversial statement as well, so let's fact check that definition too. This is a college-level anthropology textbook printed by Oxford University Press in 2021. And if we flip to the glossary and look up gender, we find the following definition. The cultural construction of beliefs and behaviors considered appropriate for each sex. And note the wording there. Each sex, not both sexes. Because if we actually open the text and find where they talk about gender, we get this paragraph. Many anthropologists did significant research throughout the 20th century that demonstrated why human cultural practices could not be reduced to racial differences. This is of course talking about the fact that race is also a social construct, but that's not the point of this video. They also argued that culturally shaped gender roles considered appropriate for males or females in a given society could not be reduced to or predicted by the biological sex of an individual, whether determined by anatomy, physiology, or chromosomes. Today, anthropologists, along with others, call into question question the assumption that human beings come in two and only two biological sexes, and that gender roles are built on those two sexes. As anthropologist Caradwin Lewis puts it, we cannot understand our bodies except through culture. 
Therefore, there is no pre-gendered body, and there is no raw pre-cultural body or body experience. While biological bodies undoubtedly exist, we are not brains in jars. How we interpret, understand, and experience those bodies is culturally shaped. So yes, humans are sexually dimorphic, and there are biological differences between the sexes. Nobody's saying that isn't true. All we're saying is that those differences don't always fall into two mutually exclusive categories, and they are not necessarily determinate of gender. But let's go one level deeper, because while bioanthropology is the scientific study of the biology of humans, very often when we talk about this stuff, the conversation turns towards medicine. So let's look at the medical perspective of gender. And if you want to know what modern medicine has to say about gender, I encourage you to look no further than the World Health Organization's website on gender and health. Read along with me now. Gender refers to the characteristics of women, men, girls, and boys that are socially constructed. This includes norms, behaviors, and roles associated with being a woman, a man, a girl, or a boy, as well as the relationships with each other. As a social construct, gender varies from society to society and can change over time. The second paragraph introduces the concept of intersectionality, which is really important but not part of this video. And then the third paragraph reads, gender interacts with but is different from sex, which refers to the different biological and physiological characteristics of females, males, and intersex persons, such as chromosomes, hormones, and reproductive organs. Gender and sex are related to but different from gender identity. Gender identity refers to a person's deeply felt internal and individual experience of gender, which may or may not correspond to the person's physiology or designated sex at birth. Perhaps that's why every major medical association recognizes the vital role of gender-affirming care in improving the physical health and mental well-being of transgender individuals. And that's not a quote from me, that's a quote from this article, which is written by the President of the American Medical Association. So it looks like the reason why the people in these interviews aren't answering the question what is a woman in the super reductionist, oversimplified way that the interviewer wants them to is because women are far more complex and diverse and interesting than the interviewer thinks they are. Also, does anybody else notice how these interviews are always only asking about women? Nobody ever asks what is a man. Nobody ever asks about trans people in men's sports. It's always only women. Also, we never talk about intersex people. We never worry about indoctrinating people to be straight. There's never some big public outcry about straight cisgendered characters, or straight cisgendered romances, or straight cisgendered representation in the media. No one's ever talking about sexualizing children when they have a straight cisgendered teacher, or see a straight cisgendered person on TV. Instead, it's only when these people have the opportunity to blend sexism and homophobia that we're all of a sudden very concerned about the fabric of society, and the only way to have a conversation about that is by bashing trans women. Anybody else notice that? And then, of course, these videos usually wrap up with the obligatory assertion that there have always only been exactly two genders, and this whole trans thing is just a modern trend, and we need to do some critical thinking and get back to common sense. All while ignoring the fact that the interviewer clearly has no idea that there have been countless cultures around the world and throughout history that have had more than two genders, and that their own inability to escape the heuristics of their cultural upbringing does not count as critical thinking and does not change reality. And sometimes the person doing the interview takes a big bite of the crazy muffin and points out that race is a social construct and there isn't a clear definition of species, so why can't they identify as black? or a cat. What if I told you I identify as a black woman? Would you have a problem with that? Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? Because they genuinely can't understand, or at least are pretending not to understand, that just because two concepts share something in common, that doesn't mean they can be used the same way. And holy crap, why do we have to explain that to adults? My boots and my wallet are both made of leather, and yet one protects my feet and the other holds money. My headphones and my camera are both black, and yet one plays music and the other records video. Gender and race are both social constructs, and yet one is rooted in personal identity and the other is rooted in ethnicity. They want so badly for you to believe that this is difficult, and it really is not.
There's almost nothing in the universe that can be adequately described in one or two concrete sentences. I'll give you an example. Uh, what is a table? Well, a table, that's really simple. It's a plank of wood with four legs that you put things on. Okay, what if it has six legs? Is it still a table? Yeah, sure. Are there any amount of legs that it could have where it wouldn't be a table? No, but it has to be made out of wood? Uh, not necessarily. So it could be plastic or, or glass or metal. Sure, all right. Well, I have a step stool that has four legs in my uh, kitchen. Why is my table not a step stool? Well, okay, I guess a table becomes a table when it fulfills the function of being what a table needs to be in my room. And a step stool is a step stool because it fulfills the function of being a step stool. This is very similar to what womanhood is and how womanhood works and how it functions and how gender works in society. We think of it as a very simple, binary, concrete thing, when in reality, like all things, it's actually spectral and complex. And it's more of a fulfilled or performed role in society. It is a constructed role that we invented and that we gave definers to. And it's just infinitely more complex than a couple sentences, so just be more curious. In conclusion, just because the answer to a question is complicated or nuanced or unexpected, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Biology isn't simple. Gender isn't simple. Women aren't simple. Boiling women down to something like their organs or their chromosomes or their ability to give birth is absurdly reductive and astoundingly anti-feminist. And as I said in the beginning, if it weren't for the sad fact that way too many people take these interviewers seriously, it would be hysterical how much they don't get that. It's like the pseudo-intellectual version of that classic macho man trope of me big strong man because me go hunting and fishing, you woman because you have baby. As for these videos and the people in them, they already get way more attention than they deserve by pretending that they're anything more than fringe hate groups trying desperately to stay relevant in a rapidly changing world. I genuinely envy everyone who has never seen one of these videos, so this will likely be my only time responding to them. I'm Forrest Falkai, thank you so much for watching, have an awesome rest of your day, and never stop learning.